We're here with Chris Borbell, director of Prescription Thugs, Bigger, Stronger, Faster, Trophy Kids, a bunch of other stuff. And uh, we're gonna talk about ketosis. So give us uh, some of the rundown on ketosis. Just tell us like, what the hell is ketosis? Ketosis is basically a process where your body uh, goes from burning glucose, which is the preferred fuel of uh, your brain and your heart and everything, most of the time. However, when you go into ketosis, there is no glucose, so your body needs what's called ketones. Those ketones are made from fat in your liver, and they are actually preferred over glucose if there is a choice, uh, but ketones usually only come out when you are really low on glucose or carbohydrates. When did you decide to go on the ketogenic diet? I know you've done it many times, but kind of more recently, walk us through when you decided to do it again. Yeah, so more recently, um, I've been having a lot of pr trouble with pain, and I've been doing a documentary called A Leaf of Faith about Kratom. A lot of people have seen uh, me talking about that, maybe see me on Joe Rogan talking about that. And um, just the, the, the thirst for knowledge. You always talk about self-education in your videos. And um, for me, I realized that I, I didn't really know anything about nutrition. I was learning about uh, nutrition from guys in the gym, but I wasn't really reading or studying anything. Sort of my first introduction was back a couple of years ago reading uh, Rob Wolf's Paleo Solution. So I just went back to like read Keto Clarity by Jimmy Moore. I went back and I read uh, Rob Wolf's new book, Wired to Eat. I've read The Case Against Sugar. I've read The Obesity Code by Jason Fung, The Complete Guide to Fasting from Jason Fung. And I've studied these books uh, in depth to try to get a lot of information about the ketogenic diet and just nutrition in general and try to focus myself in on like, I. the real reason is, I'll tell everybody this, I had a dream where I died in the dream. And when I died in the dream, it was because I, I was unhealthy, you know? And um, at 44 years old, uh, I'm not doing, I wasn't doing the optimum things for my body. I was eating a ton of sugar every day. I was addicted to candy and just was time to, to stop it. So, Me too. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like right, right after Christmas, kind of actually kind of started before Christmas, which always screws yourself. But then I just basically had a light Christmas where I didn't really eat many carbs during Christmas. I didn't put on extra weight during Christmas. I wasn't losing weight then. But then like right after it, I just decided to go full blast into it. How much weight have you lost? Uh, so far, it hasn't been great. You know, I was on Cytomel, which was a, um, it's a drug for your thyroid. Through that specific drug and a ketogenic diet before, I went from 250 pounds when I did prescription thugs down to about 198, 200, you know? And then more recently, I was up around 205, sitting around 205 after Christmas. I've gone from 205, my lowest weight has been 178, today away around 185. Uh, so it hasn't been like a massive amount of weight, but it's 15 pounds of weight. And the big difference is though, if you look at um, my ankles, like I used, I used to have edema. I used to swell up from my hip surgery down here and I could push into my, that you'd see an inch indentation, which was so disgusting. Edema, you'll sometimes see uh, some fat ladies at the airport with giant swollen ankles. It's actually That's... called, yeah, it's called dropsy. Yeah, and it, it looks like uh, it looks like they have the foot of like a fucking elephant. Yeah, and my feet looked like that. It was disgusting. It's from my hip surgery. I have poor circulation in my lower body. They cut through some major uh, arteries and veins or something. I don't. I'm not really too sure. But all I know is it sort of happened after that. And um, my legs would swell up all the time. If I flew, every I flew up here. There's no swelling whatsoever. The ketogenic diet completely stops the process of inflammation, and for me, has gone a long way into killing pain. Did you use the ketogenic diet when you were uh, going through rehab as well? Is that kind of when you, like, uh, yeah, more actually, modern day times? I know you and I did it, like, a long time ago, but I went, more modern. I, I went, the first rehab that I went to was this place called Claire Foundation. Uh, well, actually, it wasn't the first. It's a long story, but I'll just say, I was at Claire Foundation, which is a, a great service, but it's a government-run rehab. The food wasn't very good, Put it, let's just put it that way. And so the only choice I really had was, uh, they said, do you have any dietary restrictions? And all they had there was like day old bread and like all this garbage anyway. So I said, yeah, I do have dietary restrictions. My doctor said I can't eat carbohydrates. <laughs> and they said, that's bullshit. There's, that's not a dietary restriction. I said, well, I need to eat gluten free. I need to eat, and they made me get a letter from a doctor to, in order to like, like even eat that way. But then when I would go into the, uh, the kitchen or the mess hall or whatever they call it, because it was kind of like the military or jail, they would basically throw a slop of like chicken and you know whatever vegetable they had on it. So basically I was starving my way through rehab, 
And um, at that point, I had gone down from 250 to about 217. So you were trying like a war on carbs, but maybe not necessarily straight keto because maybe there wasn't enough fat to get a hold of even? I wasn't keto because I didn't know what, I didn't know what keto was. I was still stuck in my old definition of, of keto. The uh, first uh, rendition of keto that we've done was through uh, our boy Ron Fedco, and we didn't even know what it was really. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I was at the gym and I was training for a powerlifting competition, and um, my buddy Michael Hearns like, well, why? You know, why are you gonna go Michael in? Michael Trend. Michael Trend. Uh, why are you gonna go in? 97, 1996, 97, 95, I think. Okay. 95. Yeah, 1995. I won the California State Championships that year, and what happened was it was around nine, 94, like late 94. Uh, the Ron Fedco, who was my trainer at the time, and, and not trainer, training partner, and Michael Hearn was my training partner, uh, they basically agreed. These guys like, were training you online, right? No, 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 no. They weren't <laughs> online. We were there every day in person, 8 o'clock in the morning every single day. Gold's Gym, Venice. And um, what happened was the very first day I picked up like 600 pounds, literally the first day I squatted them, 600 pounds. I walked it back, and I said, sit back, and I sit back, sit back, and I went, boom. <laughs> first first day in Gold's Gym, fell flat on my ass with 600 pounds. <laughs> and when I fell and I, and I got back up, they are like, you're too fat. You're so unstable with the bar. You're just too fat. And I was like, what do you mean unstable? Like, you're all over. You take the bar out like this. And they're like, we think you're going to die. <laughs> and I weighed about 245 pounds. So I probably was going to die. Five, and they were six. right. Yeah. So Ron prescribed me a diet. He told me to go to the front desk, get a pen and a piece of paper, and he's like, write this down. I'm gonna give you your full diet. Just get ready, write it down. So I go over and I get this paper. I'm like all ready to write down a whole diet plan. He goes, ready, write it down. Red meat and water. Not a stick of gum, not a breath mint. I don't want you to have anything for two weeks. I want you to eat red meat and water. Talk I was about, about a vertical diet. I was about 242 when I started that diet. It was the first time I've ever cut in carbs from my, from my diet. I think I weighed in under 220 for that meat. The very next meat I went in, I weighed 198. So I, I, and I was in good shape. You know, I was in college at the time. It was a perfect time to lose weight. I was a bouncer at a bar. I went from 242 to 198, and that really upped my stock with the ladies over there at the, hey. at the 901 Club in downtown hey Los now. Angeles. I work there too. Hey now. Hey now. So from a health standpoint, you know, people maybe uh, that are listening are like, fuck man, red meat and water, that sounds terrible. Yeah. Some of those vegan gains that people are talking about. Uh, some people are probably kind of scared about the fat content, some of that kind of stuff. What are some things that you've learned through doing the ketogenic diet and do you feel like you're pretty healthy? Well, look, I went, I can say that I'm pretty healthy all I want, but what really matters is our blood work, right? So I went to my doctor, Dr. Ram McLean, and I said, hey, check out my blood work. My cholesterol was 190. Um, that was total cholesterol. Uh, everything was just super low. Like everything was like perfect. He, what he said to me when he um, looked at everything, he said, dude, you're a rock star. You know, he's like, you're, he's like, I don't know you look what. look like a rock star with those glasses and that hat, hat I kind of like shit. Look at that hat. But anyway, what he said was like, you're, and, and I was excited because that's when I know that all this stuff is working, you know. Uh, he said my LDL had come up a little bit, but he said that that's misleading because LDL coming up isn't always bad because there's two types of LDL and we'd have to do a further test to see what that is. I got my A1C checked the other day and it was at the lowest it can possibly be, which is like less than four, nice. right? So it's like as low as it can possibly be. That's kind of one of your markers for like insulin sensitivity or something like that, correct? Yeah, so everything's gone down. Now the one thing that I have to admit, um, I was just talking about like I got off of Cytomel, right? We think we should be honest with everybody. Transparency. Got, yeah, I got off of Cytomel. I gained about 10 pounds back. So I'm back up to about 190 and um, have since come down about five or six pounds from there. But the biggest problem I have lately, you know, I've been freezing. I've yeah. been freezing cold like a lot. And um, the reason that is, is my body's trying to regulate my thyroid hormone. I was taking thyroid, I'll admit it. I was taking it <laughs> like a steroid. I was taking it to not be so fat. I was taking it because I was self-conscious about my weight. And I was taking it because I was a fat fuck who was so maybe afraid. It, maybe it messed with your hormones a little bit. It totally bit. messed with my hormones. But the thing was, I, at the time, I wasn't willing to put in the work. And then what I realized was that through sobriety and through all these things that I've built, like, if I don't need alcohol or drugs, then I don't need any of this shit. I don't need processed carbohydrates. A, you know, uh, a bag of Sour Patch Kids is not going to improve my life at all. So it'll be, I'll be happy for like five minutes and then I'll feel like shit. 
And nowadays when I eat sugar, it really reverses everything for me. Like I went to the movies the other day, had a bunch of sugar, and um, I, Rob Wolf said something that really like stuck in my head. He said, my goals have changed. You know, when I was younger, I wanted to be big and strong. I this. Now all I do want to do is play with my grandkids, which he doesn't even have yet, by the way, he just has kids. So he's like, I want to grow up and I want to play with my grandkids. And that really hit me deep. And I said, like, if I keep eating like shit, if I keep, you know, not taking care of myself or if I give up on this, and I'm telling you guys right now and you can hold me accountable, I will not give up on this. I might give up on, I might not do keto forever, but I will not give up on not eating bullshit. Like, I will not give up on it. How do you uh, feel at 44 years old versus uh, when you were, let's say, 34 years old? Well, look, I ha I've been through a lot. I had double hip replacement surgery. Uh, we lost our brother, who was like, you know, the sort of rock in our family. Like, he was kind of the, uh, the one that inspired all this stuff. Uh, I've been through a lot of shit, you know, and through <laughs> an addiction and rehab and everything. And through all that stuff, uh, c coming out the other side, I actually feel fucking awesome. Because I think that maybe you think you might feel better now. I mean, regardless of the hip surgery, that's a traumatic thing to go through. But like hip surgery aside, about you know eight, we, ten years ago, we discussed you feel it. a little bit better now versus uh, versus the way you felt then. Well, we discussed it before, and my the way that I feel about myself a lot comes from the way that other pe people um, tell me they feel about the things that I've done. Right. So that's you know the, I've I've been. Uh, super confident lately. I've been super excited about like the things that I have coming up. So um, when I was 34, I couldn't really squat or deadlift without a lot of pain. And at 44, I can't really squat or deadlift without a, pain, a lot of pain. Uh, the difference is I'm smart enough to not squat and deadlift all the time to kill myself. Like I'll do it one or the other. Maybe Get some one, in here and there. Yeah, once a week maybe. Like I'll do one or the other once a week because I can't do it anymore. Right. So um, there's no, nothing wrong with like realizing like I can't do that anymore, and if I do do it anymore, it's detrimental. I've just grown up a little bit, I think, you know. You know, with all the fat intake, a lot of people are going to immediately think that it's like unhealthy. Um, the definition of health is extremely debatable. I, I don't even think if you had a hundred dietitians that you would really find anything that they would agree upon. You get a couple guys that say that vegetables are great, and a couple guys that say that they suck. What's your kind of definition of health? No. I don't really think that there's any bad food. I think it's all dose dependent. So um, I don't think ice cream is bad, but I think a gallon of ice cream is bad or even a pint of ice cream is bad, but maybe not like a scoop of ice cream to, to uh, cure your cravings that you've been having for six weeks for freaking ice cream. Or, or, or like if you've been really craving it, just have ice cream one day. Like it doesn't really matter. I don't think that it's about like um, demonizing certain foods or food groups or even, even for example, fat. I don't think it's about necessarily eating a lot of fat. I think it's about just like knowing a little bit about fat and sort of upping it a little bit. I also like things like the Bulletproof Diet. I like the things that Dave Asprey's been putting out there and some of those guys. And people will think they're crazy, but they say it in Moneyball. The first one through the wall always comes out bloody. You've experienced that yourself with your career. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you try to do something different, uh, people are gonna jump all over you and jump down your throat. Uh, the, the bottom line is research doesn't lie. And the research says, the ketogenic diet stops inflammation. I've talked to people uh, on my YouTube channel, Keto Strong, about uh, curing brain cancer with the ketogenic diet. I've talked to people who've reversed their diabetes in a couple weeks. I've just I've seen too much um, for anybody on your YouTube channel or anybody that makes a comment here to debate me on it. Like they just can't because I know too much. So we're gonna actually put all this stuff, we're gonna wrap it up in a nice little ball, and we're gonna put it in a documentary for you. Uh, probably start that in like May or June, you know? And I think that's that's the key, is providing people with good information and honest information. If there's information out there that people are putting out there and it's not honest, I'm gonna call them on it. If there's things about, you know, the ketogenic diet that aren't true, we're gonna call them on it. Like, you know me, I like to be like down the middle, so I don't want, I would never feel good about myself if what I was doing was not contributing to somebody's health. If it was contributing to their demise, I'd feel like shit. So I know the things that I put out there, I research a lot, I take a lot, I do a lot. With Kratom, it took me six months to decide whether or not to make that movie, and those things are important to me, you know? You're giving out information to stop the inflammation. Information will stop <laughs> inflammation, yeah, but there's, 
inflammation is the cause of so many diseases and so many problems in our country. You know, and I know like people will watch this and they'll leave a bunch of comments, keto's unhealthy, but he's still fat, blah, blah, blah. It's not about all that, and I don't care. I can still be fat, my girlfriend's hot, and yours is not. So that's what I tell people. When people get mad at me or, or like, oh, you're saying this, but you're not, you know. It's like, I'm just trying. All I'm doing is fucking trying. I'm putting in some effort, and I'm trying to help other people by putting in effort and putting in more effort than a lot of normal people put in. You know, like I said, like I've read, I've, I've read all those books. I've what done do all the research. What do you think about when people uh, speak, you know, they'll, they'll speak in some of these absolutes. They'll say, sugar's bad, or fat's bad, or... You know, doing too much cardio is gonna strip you of all your muscle and strength. What do you think of some of that? I think they're stupid. I mean, like, look, only a Sith speaks in absolutes. Damn right. Uh, only a Sith, Sith deals in absolutes is actually what the real quote, I think, right? And that comes from uh, my boy, Rob McIntyre, AKA Spray, AKA John, John Cena's trainer, just told me that recently when I went down there to talk to him uh, just about some stuff. We just went and hung out at his gym. And um, when he told me that, he, he was, we were talking about this documentary that I'm going to do. And he's like, you got to make sure that you go interview the people that are against it. And I, that got me thinking uh, right away, like, that, those are the first people that we're going to contact. The first people we're going to talk to are the people that are, like, dead set against it to try to figure out why they're so dead set against it so that we can um, try to see if their claims are valid or if it's something that needs to be addressed as the truth you know so I don't think anybody should speak in absolutes I don't think um, you should never say like I'm not even gonna stand here and say I'll never look like Mike O'Hearn you never know you guys ever see the movie face off you can look like anybody <laughs> give me uh, five foods that you like for, for, for your diet that you're doing now the keto diet I think grass-fed beef number one ground uh, grass-fed beef probably one of the best things on the planet that you can eat um, so I eat a lot of that not a lot of that, but sometimes. I like um, uncured bacon. I'm just a fan of bacon. Bacon's fatty, greasy. It tastes good. It's got good saturated fats. Red meat, uh, bacon, okay. Uncured bacon. Yeah. But, that's true. but what I really love, my favorite thing, is actually pokey. Lately, poke. Oh, yeah. Over, pokey. over here, our buddy, Zuma Pokey over there, Davis. Yeah. I shout got, out, um, homie. I give a shout out to Mainland Pokey in uh, Marina Del Rey. That's why I usually go in there oh, in Santa yeah. Monica. Uh, so Maine, what do you like uh, fish-wise? I like um, salmon belly. It's really fatty. I, I get salmon belly and salmon usually in like a, a little cup. How about a little salmon belly for smelly? There you go. <laughs> and what I like is um, I like that they put a lot of greens in there and like a lot of vegetables and stuff. So that's so my fourth food is a giant food group. But it's not a food. It's vegetables, right? You should eat as, much, as many vegetables as you can. Just eat as many vegetables as you can possibly. What are vegetables going to do for you? <clears throat> provide you with nutrients, micronutrients. We're getting our macros from our, our meats and our other foods, like right. But uh, we need micronutrients also. Uh, and in vegetables, they don't have a whole lot of macronutrients. There's not a lot of protein and celery or carbs or you know they're, they're micronutrients. But also we get with vegetables, we get fiber, and oh, fiber is going to yeah. help you take all that fat. Show us where it's going to help you blow it out. Oh, I gotta flush it all out. So that's number four. And I think the fifth food that I use the most, well, I could put it, I could like maybe put this in to one, is um, brain, oct brain octane oil, which is made by Bulletproof. Or you can get a, um, a C8 MCT oil, which is a, the, the reason why you want the C8, it's a little 78% bit. 78% of the proceeds of this message go right into his pocket. Yeah, right. So please get that Bulletproof. He needs <laughs> your money, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. to raise funds for his next the, documentary. Um, no, the thing is, I don't actually endorse any products. I just use what works, right? So, uh, Bulletproof, uh, that works for me. I also use a company called Inertia. They make a C8 MCT oil. So just look for a C8 MCT oil. They actually sell cheaper ones on Amazon. Uh, you can get it anywhere. So a C8 protein is gonna actually be a little bit more, a little bit better on your digestion. C8 fat. C8, yeah, uh, not, not protein. protein, yeah. C8 um, MCT oil is what it is. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting all confused here, right? Yeah, but a C8 fat is what? C8 fat is a part of it. MCT oil has several fats. A C, I believe, 6, 8, 10, and 12 or something like that. It might, I might have messed that Sounds up. Sounds very uh, even-numbered-ish. But the, C, the C8 is the one that they say has all these health benefits and actually, you know, your, your body will... Maybe you, easier for ket ketosis or something. Uh, well, actually, uh, the thing with the C8, the important thing to know is that it converts directly to ketones, and that's great for the ketogenic diet. We want to produce ketones. 
The other thing I think is grass-fed butter. Uh, a lot of people need to understand that uh, by making a bunch of vegetables, we need fat with that. We need to, we need to put some fat in the diet. So just smother those uh, vegetables in grass-fed butter or smother those vegetables in a, you know, not too much. Just take, like you don't, you definitely want to watch it on the MCT oil. You don't want to have disaster pants. You want to take, you know, just like a tablespoon or no more it, ever. It does matter how much food you eat, correct? I think it matters how much food you eat. We talk about calories in and calories out. And there's definitely a definitive problem with calories in, calories out. And for those of the people that think there's not a problem with calories in, calories out, riddle me this. If I was on a diet and I was losing a pound a week, right, after 188 weeks, how much would I weigh? <laughs> Zero pounds. Well, that's never gonna happen, right? I would die before I ever reached zero pounds. Right. But but why would I why would I stop losing weight? Hormones. What's yeah. another reason I'd stop yeah. losing weight? Genetics. Right? So there's too many factors that just isolate calories in, calories out. If it fits your macros, this and that, like you have to consider. I think it's a safe bet to just say that the calories in, calories out, or a calorie is a calorie, is probably at least five percent off in either direction, depending on the human being that's consuming the food. Because somebody like our boy in SEMA at Super Training Gym, who's 260 pounds, probably eight percent body fat, the way that he's uh, processing some of those foods is much different than us, and it probably always has been, even when he was not. 260 even when he was 170 he's probably his body has probably always responded much differently than ours yeah well and it's not to make an excuse or it's not to say oh, i was born with bad genetics like that's stupid too uh we we are all dealt a deck of cards and my deck of cards happen to be an ability to make these documentary films that can really help people and your deck of cards happen to be a lot of strength and motivation to inspire a whole generation of people to come up and be power lifters you know and so we each have a hand of cards were dealt mine also in my cards had bad hips by the time I was 17 years old I could barely walk when I was in high school bad hips but a lot of creativity yeah so, so you, you give you, and take right you get you get trade-offs so now what I'm trying to do is use my creativity and put it into my physical being so that I can be a better person right and help a lot more people Give us uh, two things that have helped you stay on the diet, whether it be a snack or inspiration or everybody, otherwise. Everybody that's watching this, um, anybody that's watched Keto Strong, anybody that's been on my Instagram. Saying, Keto Strong is his YouTube channel, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, saying, and, it, and it'll all pick up as we go along here. Uh, but the thing is, for me, the most important thing is helping other people. Because when you help other people, it helps yourself. This is a selfish endeavor. And a lot of people think that... Um, like, wow, I can't believe you took your time to help my kid get sober. I can't believe you took the time to help me lose weight. Well, guess what, buddy? I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing it because I feel good when I do it. I do it because it gives me a rush. It gives me energy. And when I can't figure out that problem or the problem's even more difficult, I, I want to attack it even harder. So I think, like, by everybody helping people, like, if you think about... Like I'm gonna do this diet and when I figure it out or learn a bunch of information, I'm gonna use it to help people. That's one thing that's really helped keep me on a diet. The other thing is like the fact that I'm sober has really helped me just think about like if I don't need drugs and alcohol, what do I, I don't need carbs. Certainly don't need cinnamon toast crunch. You know? Mmm, cinnamon toast crunch. I, I'm not making everybody hungry. Everybody's like pissed at me now. But yeah, the, the thing is like, look, man, I, I just feel like as long as we are here, and as long as uh, we're, we're alive and ticking and we're, and we're moving, we should be helping people and we should be helping ourselves. And the number one thing, I guess if I had to boil it all down, like the success of this diet has also been um, a com camaraderie with, with a few key people, being my brother, who is uh, this guy. Hey. Mark Smelly Bell, who's awesome. My girlfriend, Lauren Pappas, AKA Fit DJ, who is awesome and also on a ketogenic diet. Uh, just a lot of my friends that are that are doing it and reaching out to me every Andy single Bell day. Andy Bell registered yellow yesterday on the ketonics. Yeah, just the fact that Andy's <laughs> even doing it. Like as long, I've known Andy for 15 years. I don't yep. think that Andy has ever. Um, she's always been in great shape. She's been a swimmer. She's always yeah, like she's always been what beautiful. She Looks almost the same as the day I met her. Yeah, and then um, her switching to keto though is a big deal because she's like making keto meals for us and helping us eat keto and like you know we go to the restaurant we all order the same thing. Got Moray. And there's only two more people that we need to lower on board, and their names are Sheldon and Rosemary. <laughs> we gotta get my parents on this beast. 
and I think that'll happen. You know, I think we can we can do that. How does somebody know this uh, is the last thing we're going to say, but probably the most powerful? How does uh, somebody know when they have a problem with drugs or alcohol? Your thing was mainly alcohol. How does somebody know? Pretty easy, man. When you stop wanting success as badly as you can breathe, that's when you've lost yourself. When you no longer have goals or aspirations, when you just look forward to the day being over, you know, or, or you just look forward to being nighttime so that you can drink when your social, um, somebody said this to me yesterday, uh, yeah, a lot of social shit came up. I'm like, dude, what is social? Like, what's social shit? I haven't done anything social in the past three years and I feel great. I think that uh, a lot of social stuff is garbage. It feeds into, um, you know, I don't know, it's great to have friends and it's great to do things with friends, but uh, going out and drinking with friends or doing drugs with friends is so unhealthy. And I was so into that for so long, you know, and then uh, wh when you really know that you have a big problem with drugs or alcohol is when you go from being a party animal like I was, I would be at Sharky's all the time and hanging out with a bunch of people and all of a sudden you're sitting on your couch and you're by yourself and you've run out of pain pills so you're on your hands and knees and you're the guy that directed bigger, stronger, faster. You're the guy that like people tell you that you've changed your life and you're on the goddamn floor like this, hands and knees, and you're looking, you're looking for a pill. Your life has been reduced to a goddamn little tiny pill. And when you get to that point, you're sick. You're not a bad person, you're just sick. And those words were spoken to me by Richard Tate, who owns Cliffside Malibu. He grabbed me by the shirt like this, and he said, you're not a bad person, you're just sick, and we can fix it. And when he told me he could fix it, I just started crying. He gave me a hug, and that was it. You, know? you said your first one of your first experiences with being drunk with alcohol was a, was a bad one, and you said that like you kind of found out this is not really research. This is more like evidence that you saw firsthand. Yeah, there was other people that had the same experience that ended up being alcoholics. Is that right? Well, I can ask everybody out there to um, examine themselves and say what well, was the first time you took, you know, was the first time you went out drinking, like heavily drinking, or like what happened? The first time you uh, took your oxycotton, what happened? And, People will tell you some ridiculous story that they ended up in the hospital or they ended up, you know, just some crazy story. I ended up, my friend dropped me off on the front porch with no shirt on <laughs> and I was 16 years old and I was hammered. I was traumatized. I remember that day. Yeah. And I, I was throwing up everywhere and my parents didn't know what was going on and they had mad dogs so they sort of knew what was up, but um, they didn't they didn't really know what was going on and, and I, it was embarrassing. But right then and there, I should have known. And then all because of that incident, all through high school, I never really drank. I never really did shit. And I think that's a big reason why you didn't. Yeah, I would go to parties and I would actually smoke cigars because Arnold Schwarzenegger smoked cigars and I thought <laughs> that was cool. And we would, we would smoke cigars and we would quote Arnold Schwarzenegger movies and people loved us. So it like didn't matter what the... Um, Still accepted socially. Yeah, oh my God. I, more than accepted socially. We were, like me and Holtz, my best friend that we used to hang out with a lot, we never really drank, but we, we knew everybody in school. Like we were best friends with everybody because we had a lot of energy and we were excited about stuff. And then um, when I got out of high school and I came to USC, I had a very similar experience where um, I went to a frat party. And the first frat party I ever went to, there's a bunch of chicks there. Everything. Everybody's like throwing beer in your face and everything's free. And I got hammered, I got smashed. And I ended up passing out in this fraternity and waking up on their couch <laughs> in the morning. And like nothing severe really happened, but that was just like an embarrassing, weird kind of waking up and so, you know. But, but I've done that a lot, woken <laughs> up in weird spots. One time we went to Columbus, Ohio, middle of the winter. The middle of the winter, I woke up in some storage unit. Like Andy was like, how did you not freeze the day? I think it was somebody's like, garage actually. <laughs> could, could have been somebody's garage of a condo <laughs> or something. But it's like, people are like, how did you live through that? And all I can say is, you know, thank God that I did. That's it. That's when it comes to food. You know, it's uh, it's less talked about. You know, when somebody's really fat, uh, someone's like not like, hey, dude, you need to go get help. When you're drinking, it is a little bit more acceptable. Still a touchy subject when you're drinking or doing drugs. Somebody might say, hey, man, you're kind of fucking up. Like, how can I help? Or like, what's going on in your life? Anyway, where where can somebody go to get help for drugs and alcohol? Well, AA is free. I think um, I used that program for a while. Um, you know, for me, I realized that it's not for me long term. 
but it helped me tremendously and it was free. So I think AA is a great place to start. Just go online, look up like, just literally look up where's an AA meeting near me and you'll find it. And when you go into AA, weird things happen. People start calling you, like you have, you know. Fight just, club. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> kind of like a fight club. You know, when I went to, when I went to, when I was in AA all the time, and I would come home and tell Lauren what happened in the AA meeting. She's like, I want to go to AA. <laughs> like, and she doesn't even have a problem with anything. You know, just, she just thought it was cool. I was meeting all these people. You know, I, I've just made so many great connections through AA. And I think that that's the simplest way. Um, the, the other way is like, it depends on what your problems, you know, with. If your problems with uh, alcohol, like I always recommend professional help. I just think that's the best way to go is to try to get professional help. But AA isn't professional help and it's helped millions of people. Right. So I think also we have to look at like what's practical, right? Things like Kratom, if you're on pain pills, Kratom is a great way to uh, to detox yourself off of pain pills, but you need something mentally or you're never gonna hang on to it. You need to know the rules of sobriety. You need to know the 12 steps. You don't even need to use the 12 steps. I just recommend that you know what they are. They're actually very redundant and a lot of them are very stupid. A lot of them deal with God and I don't really believe in God like a lot of people do. So um, I have a different relationship or different thought of what God is, but um, it's all up to you whether you're gonna fix the problem or not. You can't put it in anybody else's basket. You can't put it on anybody else. You have to realize you have a problem, you have to admit it, and you gotta go to AA. And one, like once you walk in the door of AA, you've made enough of a decision to get yourself better. Awesome, man. Even though you're shorter than me, I look up to you. I love you like a brother. I love and, you like uh, a brother. Catch you later. Later.